Francisco Dan Pony. Assalamualaikum. Welcome to Face to Face with me, Azad Ali. Um, this week, uh, we are continuing the discussion about SRE, sex relationship and education, but this time looking at uh, more from a parent's uh, perspective and how parents can get involved with this. And uh, alhamdulillah, joining me in the studio is Yusuf Patel from SRE Islamic. Assalamualaikum. Wa alaikum Jazakallah khair for joining us uh, again. Um, so, in, in terms of SRE, I mean, we, we, we kind of have a, a, an understanding and it's changing and everything else. Um, what do you think, uh, in terms of parents themselves, how can they engage on this uh, discussion and this matter? So I think it's very important, and I think it's a, it's a criticism that schools level against parents in general, uh, whether Muslim or non-Muslim parents. And I think it's uh, something that we need to look at, is how much do we, how much do we engage with our children's schools? Hmm. Um, when do we approach them? Do we ask questions? Do we help in our children's schools? Or are we just there to... Uh, point out um, the problems when they happen. Hmm. Um, so are we there in, in, in are we, do we congratulate them or, or thank them for when they do, do a good job? Hmm. Um, well, and I mean, that, that point, maybe if we could take it even more uh, yeah, back, yeah. which is how involved are you in your child's education yes, or yes. your child's upbringing? Yeah. Yes. Um, now, as a parent sometimes, uh, and, and actually quite often in, mm. in many households, both mother and father are yes. at work yeah, um, yeah, yeah. and, and they're, they're busy. So mm. the engagement levels they have might not be as much. Yes. Um, so, you know, they, they quite sometimes, I would say, mm. rightly rely on the state yes. uh, to provide a balanced education. So, yes. you know, is that wrong? Well, it, you know, a lot of parents, when, it, when their children are grown up, and they may have missed out on their children growing up and, and nurturing their children, giving them tarbiyah and nurturing them Islamically. Uh, when they grow up, they, do, they, they don't regret not having gone to work, but they do regret not having been a part of their children's lives. Mm. And so I think we've got to think about, actually, we are working very hard, and that's fine. Yeah? Working to, to, uh, to uh, put food on the table is a, is, a, is a laudable thing to do. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. But if that's at the expense of our children and their upbringing, hmm. then we've got to really question, are we, are we doing, what, 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 why are we doing this? Are we, are, we, are we doing it in the right way? Okay. Um, so I think my question is, first of all, is what, what, how, what, is, the le what is our, the level of our interaction with the school? Okay. Yeah? Is, are we there in, at the school? Are we speaking to the teachers? So are we talking about... Um be, being um, on the parent govern as a parent governor, and it could be body. being a parent governor. It yeah. could be part of the governing body, but also it could be just some just simply interacting with the school, yeah, mm. asking them questions, showing them that you're involved in your child's education, you're interested in different aspects of teaching. Um, sometimes parents, unfortunately, they will only interact with the school when there's something to complain about, yeah, and that really makes. But isn't that life? I mean, most of but the, the time, thing is, think about you know, I've how got a mobile phone service and everything yes. else. I, I'm not going to interact with it. I, you know, is a no, but that's fine. But in terms of with the school, you're hoping to create a stronger relationship than with your hopefully with your mobile phone provider. Okay. Yeah. Um, yes, your, it's, it's, it's so not the best of examples. <laughs> yeah. But I think in terms of because you want to create a, a relationship whereby when you when you when you advise a school or tell a school about something, your voice is taken seriously. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so that's one thing. That, that that's a small thing, but it's an important thing that we should mm. think about our interaction with the school. But what about but in also, terms of yeah. this subject matter itself? Subject matter. I mean, how, should, how do yeah. we as parents uh, understand it more? I mean, you, yes. you guys offer in yeah. SRE Islamic some yes. training and guidance. Yeah. But I think. But I think one thing is we when we is that you know as a parent, it's, it's very it's okay to ask questions to schools mm. about various subjects. Sometimes. When parents don't ask questions about a particular issue in a school, then school will, will feel or take the, take, take the signal from that lack of a response that parents are not really interested in that subject mm. area. So whenever we speak to schools, schools will say, yeah, no parent has asked any questions about SRE in the school. Mm. No, question, uh, no parent has withdrawn their children. It's not really an issue for parents. Yeah. So if parents just raise questions, what are you teaching in SRE? Mm. Can I look at the materials? Can I come in and uh, 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 and look at the the schemes of work? You know, even asking those questions is a revolutionary act in most schools because most parents don't do it. Mm. 
So I think we should encourage parents to do that. But secondly, engage with their children and ask them the simple question: What, what, we, what did you what did you do at school today? Mm. Um, how was it at school? And just get the ch child just to regularly speak about what they what they what they've, got, they've, what they've been through, what they've talked about, um, and that could alert you to things that are being taught in schools that you mm. may want to speak to your child about or speak to the school about. Okay. Um, if if I did uh, want to engage with the school and everything else. Um, I mean, how would I know what to look out for? Uh, or, you know, if I see something, how would I know that's actually wrong? Or okay. First what, thing, what maybe, would be my yeah. guidance for this? So maybe if, you, if we're looking at, I think we don't look at the, the, the broadest area of education, but maybe look at SRE. So maybe just ask for the SRE policy of the school for, as a starting point. Mm. So go to the school and say, can I have a copy of the, of the SRE policy? Now, in terms, of, in terms of law, even written in the statute books, a parent uh, has to be given the SRE policy upon... Uh, request. Right. Uh, so the school has to photocopy that and give it to you and say there it is or email it to you. Um, in future schools will have to put that on their websites right. um, and uh, and so you'll be able to just download it from the school. Um, even and after that you ask certain questions. Yeah, mm. You look at the SRE policy and you say there's some gaps here. I don't I don't see where it talks about resources. Mm. So you ask the school, what resources do you use? What uh, are there any organisations that come in to deliver aspects of your SRE mm. teaching? Um, what do you talk, do? Do you, uh, do you take into account the fact that a certain percentage of your children come from uh, a Muslim background or a Christian background, other faith mm. backgrounds? Um, so just so ask can, can, can a parent actually uh, go to a school and say, "Look, uh, you know, I, I'm a Muslim. Yes. My child's a Muslim, uh, yeah. and when you teach these lessons, I want uh, that to be factored in." Uh, just like I would like my son to eat halal or, yes. or my daughter to eat halal, yes. I want you to factor that in. They, you can, yeah. But I remember I, 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 we, we contacted the, uh, most schools in London, most primary schools in London to find out what they were teaching a few years ago. And uh, one of the schools came back, a, sc a school in Tower Hamlets came back and said, we use this book as well because we know that a lot of schools, in, in a lot of children in our school come from Muslim background. So we, t we, we use this book, which is a book around growing up according to a Muslim values ethos. Right. And I said to the teacher, you know, this, this has made my day. Yeah, mm. I'm, I've never heard of a school doing that. So really congratulations on that mm. uh, because it's unique and it's, uh, but it's really what schools ought to be doing. They should have a range of materials to, to, uh, so that children can see their background reflected in what's being taught. Mm. Unfortunately, what tends to happen sometimes, in, inadvertently or sometimes by design, is that children, our Muslim children sometimes, or people, children from all faith backgrounds are asked to hang up their faith as they would hang up their, their, their coats in the morning and, and then, to, then to put it back, back on at the end of the day. So throughout the whole day, the background of the children is not even acknowledged. And psychologically, that can be very damaging to a child. Um, well, this is uh, perhaps then where issues of identity and everything yeah. else come in, you yeah. know, that you, you have to behave in a certain way when you're at school, a certain yes. way when yeah. you're at home, and a certain way when you're yes. in a mosque uh, yes. or, or something like that. But as, as, as a parent, um, I mean, would and I have to be uh, someone that's educated? I mean, what one of the things I see, and sometimes I, mm. I wonder, you know, when did we get to this point where, mm. you know, you actually go to parenting course? Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, So, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah, yeah. But what, that is an issue. What, what, yeah. is, what, what is, I mean, with me, maybe um, I've got time. Uh, I'm myself, I, I, I'm educated to a point where I can read policies yeah. and everything else. Uh, and, and, and not to put, I'm not being uh, kind of uh, fascist yeah, yeah, yeah. by saying this, but many parents won't have the time to read like a 30 page document mm. or read it and understand it mm. in a way that's going to be beneficial to them. Yeah. So yeah. like, you know, is, is there something that, you know, you offer or other people offer that they can come and get more? Parents call me every day and ask <coughs> questions about different aspects of their children's schooling, SRE uh, and elements related to that. And I'm happy to speak to parents about that. But in every school, um, there, I think even you know sometimes we characterize parents as being uneducated. Like some people, I know people who come from uh, who've, who've not born in in the UK and not been through the education system in the UK, but they come and they ask questions to the school and they ask them in a very eloquent way and they they, they do a good job of it. Mm -hmm. um, so I think in terms of where there's a will, there's a way. There's either contacting myself. There's other people you can contact. There's uh, other people in the school who may be able to help mm -hmm. in 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 clarifying some of the issues. Uh, so there's always a way to get there um, uh, and to, to find out answers. Mm. But you know, the point is, is not necessarily uh, is being able to understand every single answer you're given. 
sometimes just asking the question is what's most important. Mm. Um, asking the question shows that parents are concerned about this subject area. But you, are, you mentioned about parenting, and I think that is another issue here. Mm. You know, because if um, our if, if our children are going to be taught this in schools, and we have a limited ability to withdraw, but mm. not only that, but also that our children may learn these things in society in general. In, in, in you watch cartoons, and they've got yeah. messages. Uh, around these areas, yeah. Mm -hmm. You watch a, a film or a TV program, or what, look at a billboard on the street. They all have certain messages because we live in a very hypersexualized society. Mm -hmm. So our children will, are getting messages every day, but are they getting them from us? And that's the question we need to ask. Now, the question we we should ask is: When my children wants to know or or, or wants to, to understand and navigate those all the collection of all those messages around mm -hmm. m around them. Mm. Where did it go to? Yeah. yeah. Did it go to us, or do they just uh, try and work things out themselves, or are they being nurtured by society? And that's what mm. the parenting element that you talked about is: having okay. having that relationship with our children, uh, speaking to them, making ourselves the 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 the, the person, the go-to person they come to, mm. and ask when 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 to ask us questions about anything. Okay. And telling our children no subject, no subject area. Is outside of uh, of uh, is a no go area. Okay. Yeah? Let me um, pause there then, yeah. uh, because we're we're coming up to a break, uh, and and I, I will carry on with this uh, line of uh, discussion. Um, do join me uh, after this break, uh, inshallah, uh, where we carry on. Okay. Sure. Take care. Salaam alaikum. Yusuf, just before the break, mm -hmm. um, and I did say that uh, I'm going to come back to is, I mean, you, you said something that I think we, we definitely need to explore more, which is, um, you know, where does my child go to if mm. he or she wants to know something? Yes. Do they come to me as mm. parents mm. or do they go to their teacher? Do they mm. go to, you know, yes. somebody yeah, else yeah, out yeah, there yeah. and everything else? And, yes. and, and the second thing which you said is, I think is really profound, is there should be no... Uh, no-go areas of discussion. Yes, yes. Now, let's take the first one mm, uh, mm. Uh, area first, which is most uh, parents, th they don't really have that kind of relationship from mm, my experience mm. with their children where they discuss everything. Mm. I mean, is that is that actually something that's attainable? Yeah, you know, it's never too late. Yeah? When I have events, sometimes I speak to parents about this. I remember once I was at an event and there was a father with his like 14-year-old son, yeah? And uh, the son was saying, uh, and the son was saying quite openly, look, I, my father doesn't discuss anything with me. And the, and the father says, I'm not discussing anything with him. So there's like, we were doing like an open, almost counseling session between the father and the son. Mm. And the reality is, it's never too late to repair a relationship. Mm. Yeah, It's never too late to re repair a relationship. If if there's a will to do that, Yeah, even to go to a child and who's, who's older and who knows more than, than he should know, uh, or, who, or, or than, she do, than she does know, um, you can go to a child and say, look, there's, for many years I've not discussed any of these issues with you. I've not, I, I, I've not allowed you to discuss that with me and I apologise. Yeah? Mm. But if you can discuss anything with me. I remember one father came to me after an event I did in East London and uh, he, said, he said, look, um, I've got a son and I've got a very good relationship with him. He's, you know, I, we're like friends, yeah? we're inseparable, but I will not answer. If, any, if ever he asks a question, like once he asks a question to me, where, where, how's a child born? This child is about 13 years old. Hmm. How, how's a child born? Yeah. And I said to him, don't ask me this question. Hmm. And I said, why did you say that to him? Hmm. And he said, I, don't, I think I didn't know that I could answer that question. What, what do you mean you didn't know? Islamically, I thought that's not the sort of question that I can answer. You know, it's, it's not something that he should know. I said, the fact that he's asked this question means that this is, maybe he's, 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 he's heard something somewhere. Uh, he wants to discuss it with you. You're his father. Yeah. You've got an excellent relationship with him. Now you can't. I mean, just, just that, that barrier. Yeah, just, that example just gives uh, and highlights the issue that a lot of people think is that parents themselves aren't yes. really aware of their responsibility. I mean, yes. this leads to yeah. the second part. Is yeah. so when you say there's no no go areas. Um, yeah. yeah. A lot of parents, they, they, they have this thing, you know, uh, embarrassment uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. or shyness um, and, and, and haya and, and yeah, things yeah. like that. And, and what they don't want to do is break that down. Mm. <clears throat> so, you know, a child knows that, you know, th they need to behave in a certain way when yes. they're in front of adults and things yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. And you don't want to break it down by creating a, yeah. a friendship relationship. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. you need to maintain those things. Yeah. I mean, uh, how, how do you balance all of this? I think, you know, we, we, just, say, we just think about that if something's asked, yeah, 
that for the sake of asking, yeah, it's just just for the sake of frivolity, you know, it's just a, a vulgar thing for the sake of it, and that's something that's this that, that's looked down upon. Mm-hmm. If you imagine, you know, the Messenger of Allah, so, 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 he used to say, talk about the women of Medina, mm-hmm. and said, "Blessed are the women of Medina, yeah, they they, they don't have any shame." Uh, in 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 terms of in uh, they, they are they ask like questions uh, that, that because they want to find out about their deen you know they mm. nothing puts no nothing stops them and no shame stops them from asking about their deen they would come up to the messenger of Allah and ask him questions about sexual matters mm. intimate sexual matters mm. and the prophet used to answer them and he was the shyest of, of people the the one who epi- epitomized haya mm. but for the sake of educational reasons yeah. in terms of somebody's practicing so where, where 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 did what? we so where do we get this because look yeah. i mean you're absolutely right yeah. you know the prophet sallallahu answered all of these questions and spoke about these things in public uh, and, and 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 other places as well yeah. Yeah. so where did we as a community who are muslims yes. get this idea that you know you don't talk about the bird you know the birds mm-hmm. and the bees you never yes. talk to your children about these things you know they're, they're just going to find out yeah I think you know. I think a certain, a certain uh, uh, colonialism is probably one of the one of the one of the starts of that starting process of that because you know some of some things some uh, re- some perspectives from other religious backgrounds, some other philosophical backgrounds mm. seeped into the Muslim mind because you know Islam never said sex is bad. Mm. Yeah, uh, you know some religions say sex is a bad thing. Sex is dirty. Don't talk about sex. Now, from our perspective. Uh, Sexual relationships are bad when they're conducted in a manner displeasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm. Yeah? And they're good when they're done in a manner that is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When the Messenger of Allah so asked his, uh, his companions that having relationships with your wife is a rewardable matter, mm. they couldn't understand it. They said, mm. Messenger of Allah, how, how can it be mm. something enjoyable? Is rewardable, mm. and the messenger said, "If if you do it in a in a, in a haram way, you get sin. You are mm. sinful for that. If you do it in a halal way, you are rewarded for that." Yeah. And so I think we've got to uh, uh, we've got to almost take take a step back and say, "What does what does what does Allah and His Messenger talk talk about when they mention mm. these topics?" You know, there's there is nothing in Islam which says there's a certain age where things need to be discussed, because you know sometimes um, uh, that's why when people ask what age should we start discussing these things with our children. Now, the ideal age is the age before they find out from elsewhere. Mm. Yeah? Now, developmentally, you know your child. I, I've got five children and I know even though they are of different ages, some are younger than others, developmentally, some children are, uh, are, are more aware than others. Yeah. They're, they're girls mature. Maybe, girls yeah. mature yeah. quicker than boys. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. And some boys mature quicker than other boys. Yeah. So you know your own child's development. Mm. Um, so so what, I'm, what, I'm, what I'm saying is that when a child asks, how is a baby born, yeah. you start a discussion. You don't download all the information you have on that topic. Yeah. You just say to them, okay, uh, what do you know? Mm. Yeah, And what, what, what have you heard? Mm. And you ask, maybe you ask some questions mm. in a very neutral way, not in a... I mean, uh, the way I see it is yeah. that's, that's a golden opportunity for yes. you to uh, then explain the Islamic kind yeah, of absolutely. and the moral position yes, of yes. all of these things. Yes. Um, and the interesting, so thing, would he, the interesting yeah. thing, thing is, you know, our fiqh books, yeah. our fiqh books discuss these things. Yeah. You know, they, you know, when we look at some of the fiqh books, they talk about uh, wet dreams and the impact of those things on mm. the, on tahara. Yeah. Mm. Uh, when we talk about, uh, so all the fiqh books talk about issue about cleaning sexual part, the mm. parts of your body, about ghusl, uh, when ghusl needs to be done. You know, mm. so sometimes when you know our children are maybe taught these things in 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 fiqh classes before they even discuss it with their parents. But what yeah. I'm saying is that. Is that you know there's 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 different things different ways that we can discuss the topics. The birds and the bees way of discussing things is never the right way because that's like to, I've never spoken to you before, but I'm going to talk to you once and once only mm. about every single thing, and then I'm going to leave it. Yeah. Uh, but that's that's not the right way. The right way is actually speaking to them bit by bit about these issues when the need arises uh, by you noticing actually my son is maybe he's come across something. Uh, uh, so either, either for example, he sees something around him, and you know he's noticed that. So we're on a ra- the radio is on, yeah, mm. and something's mentioned on the radio, mm. yeah. Okay, you can switch it off at that point, but then you know actually he's heard it. So you start a discussion. Mm. That's what we call a teachable moment. You use yeah. the environment around us to discuss these things and build our values and reinforce our values. Mm. We say to our children, come to us and ask us any question whenever, mm. whenever you want. When they do ask those difficult questions. Then basically take the, don't don't get angry because you know sometimes our children they they will get from the tone of our voice yeah some things are 
to be talked to my father about and other things are not no, to be talked yeah, to my father about. Yeah. If he asks you a question, <coughs> you yeah. hear the tone of your voice, yeah, you yeah, see yeah. the way your face contorts mm. yeah. and he will know, actually, I'm not going to ask that question yeah, to my yeah. father ever again. Yeah. Don't create barriers, yeah? Because then who is he going to go to to I ask mean, his questions? I mean, just, just listening to you, Yusuf, uh, what, what, what it seems like to me is, um, you know, this whole SRE thing and everything else, uh, our children in the school are yeah. probably going to get taught that maybe yeah, at yeah. most maybe yes. in total some uh, four hours or three absolutely, three four yeah. hours yeah, yeah, yeah. but our children are spending most of their life with us yes. at home absolutely, um, absolutely. so if we actually uh, uh, as parents if yeah. we actually get ourselves into a position where we open up these discussions yes. yeah, 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 about yeah. these matters then there's a better chance of some absolutely. moral guidance absolutely uh, and, 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 and that's what you're saying um, how, how, we, how can we uh, equip parents like this and how can we get that thinking to come about because yeah. I mean I, I don't think it's an Asian thing I, th I no. think uh, it, 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 it seems to be a Muslim thing because yes. most parents yeah, yeah, yeah. whether they're Arabs or whether they're Asians or, yes. or you know African yeah, or whatever yeah. it seems like you know there yeah, is this yeah, mental yeah. thing you don't talk about these yes, things. Yes that's right there, there is a problem but I think in terms of uh, I think by discussing and saying that look, what is what are the alternatives to us discussing with our children and very emphasizing that when we talk to our children and and say you know a lot of the times uh, our children learn about behavior not necessarily by discussions but by how we act they they absorb uh, the, the 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 behavior around them mm. yeah and so the way you act towards the way the husband acts towards his wife yeah, yeah? yeah. children learn and they get messages about how a husband should treat his wife mm. uh, the way the wife treats her husband the way you speak to your children the way you interact with them you know all of these things a lot of it is non-verbal it's just about how you behave and i think sometimes we've got to think to ourselves is are we are we the are we creating the right role models are we the right models ourselves mm. if we're not what do we do to change about the way we behave yeah in terms of if we want our children to embody good akhlaq then we've got to embody good akhlaq if we want our children to love the quran we need to love the quran you know mm. it's it's the messages that we send from the way we behave in life mm. uh, th those are the things which our children will follow and and, and want to imitate uh, and so sometimes we can become the barrier for that mm. and that's not to say that we can't change. Everybody has the capacity to change. We all do. And inshallah, we, we make dua to Allah to enable us to change. We, 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 we even, uh, even imagine asking your child, I was speaking to one brother the other day, say, imagine you ask, we ask our children, uh, is there anything you dislike about the way I behave towards you? Yeah, yeah? Yeah. And from what he says and what she says, take that and say, okay, I'm going to change that. Imagine mm. the big, the big uh, imagine the message you're sending just by saying that mm, um, mm, mm. it's you know Powerful, it's our, yeah. see what we should see is that sometimes when we think about how things are changing in the society <clears throat> around us we see that as a big threat but actually sometimes we should change it around as actually it's a challenge yeah. Yeah? it's a challenge that we can actually use this challenge to try and raise children and wake yeah. ourselves up yeah no and, and 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 from what you're saying it seems like you know if, if we as parents actually take mm. that responsibility on locally yes we'll have a, a better chance well jazakallah khair uh, yusuf for uh, your uh, uh, you know discussion on this has been fantastic i think yeah. and I'm, I'm sure our, our audiences have uh, enjoyed it uh, thank you for joining us uh, again. Uh, inshallah, we've uh, uh, you know going to be here again uh, next week, mm -hmm. and we've run out of time. Uh, so see you soon, inshallah. Thank Take you. care. Assalamualaikum. Thanks.